All right, so I'll give you a little bit of instructions on this thing. Inside your batteries behind this cover, behind those screws, there's a computer that keeps track of its own state of charge. It's responsible for reporting through the communication cables how many amps are moving through the battery. And the amps is often wrong, which will throw the state of charge off, so it, it may not be correct. It's not the fault of this. If that's the, happening to you, it's the fault of your batteries. Much like a DC clamp meter shows the wrong amperage until you push the zero button, the thing is, is I just don't know how to zero those out. It helps a little bit because I programmed the BMS in here to uh, report the average instead of the lowest to the percent meter. So this will only be as accurate as your batteries. In order to enable the battery power you need to depress the power button. So now that's depressed. To turn the batteries off you would push it again and it would stick up. Having it depressed doesn't turn on the batteries immediately. It just allows them to turn on. To actually turn them on you have to press and hold this pre-charge button. I'll demonstrate that after I connect it. If this alarm starts beeping or squealing and the red light is on in here, you have a problem. Could be over current, unlikely. Could be over or under temperature, under discharging, uh, overcharging. Things happen really fast when that alarm is on, so it's not going to give you a whole lot of warning before it actually shuts the system down. It'll turn the relay off and it'll cut power to itself and then it won't be squealing anymore. Um, it still can get power when it tries to cut power if it's still connected to your other batteries or if your solar charge controller is feeding power into it, then it'll get power from there and it'll stay on, even though the button is either off or it's decided to disconnect and try and cut power because it only cuts power between it and the green batteries. Or you could have it cut power to even the Victron batteries if you run all your batteries through the contactor, which would be fine. All right, so right here we have the wire that plugs into the contactor. And there's four wires. Two of the wires apply 12 volts to turn the contactor on. The other two wires just come from here and here. And they go into the pre-charge resistor that's in the inside. So if this contactor's off and it's not making a connection here, and it's not being backfit any other power, then this converter won't have the 24 volts it needs to make the 12 volts for all the circuitry. So holding down the start button without turning this on will cause the inverter to sort of boot up, but then as soon as you let go, everything will just shut down again. So you first, of course, have to turn on the power button. Hold that down until you hear the click and the blue light, blue circular light comes on. This blue light, it's getting its 12 volts from the 12 volts that's being applied to here. So if that's getting 12 volts, that light is on. End of story. This circular light doesn't necessarily mean that the power switch is on or off. It just means that the relay is getting 12 volts, which means the batteries are connected. All right, so I explained what this one is. Now the other one. That's your RS-485, that plugs into the battery. Now there's this uh, spool here, this is your CAN bus. So with a expensive CAN bus USB adapter, and you gotta get the right one, it's like 120 bucks, you can watch all the cell voltages on the laptop. So the only other wire coming out of here is this red wire, and it is going to 24 volts positive. I just twisted it because I don't know how long you want that wire. And I'm gonna take this off here. I have a pile of these already crimped onto the wire. And the reason I gave you this instead of just a ring terminal crimp is because these are actually much thicker and stronger than what I have elsewhere. So something like this, for example, you probably can't tell in the video, but this thing is just a lot thinner and not as strong. And if you're going to be applying all the force of uh, of a actual bolt 
holding down a big fat wire, you, <laughs> if you're applying that force through the ring terminal, you need that to be strong too. So this red wire is actually fused inside here. Sometimes I throw an extra fuse on it, but it's not really needed because all that does is just come to right here and go through that little fuse. So it may look like a little bit of a mess, but um, I thought it was important since this is going in a moving vehicle that all the wires had support a good distance away from where they were actually saturated with solder because if a wire is tinned inside with solder, it's very stiff and when it, where it wiggles, there's a point at which it doesn't wiggle here and it does here and then it will end up breaking. So here we have just actual wire Oh, with a little bit of flex support from the glue, so that, that, should, that should handle thousands and thousands of miles of vibration. Same is true here where, where I've soldered these together. The shrink wrap here is, I'm hoping, actually let me check. Yeah, it is. It's going beyond the area where the solder is soaked in. So yes, okay, good. Same true here. I shrunk, so I only heat shrinked to here because then this collar gives it a little bit of stress relief allows the wire to flex more more gently because these are so stiff when they're especially when they're shrunk if you ever need to open this it opens to the left and you can actually put those two screws back in here to hold the door on all right so i have wired this up now so you'll see my state of charge is at 75 percent right now which is the average of the 57 and 90 state of charge You'll see none of my cells are actually balancing right now because they're not at the top voltage. So they're not, it's not, balancing is not even really going to be enabled right now. However, I do have a big discrepancy right here. So one of my batteries is way higher than the other. So it's balancing is on. And that's not the cells in the battery. That's a 12 volt resistor in the battery. That's across the whole 12 volts. And it's not because the state of charge is represented as higher here, which may or may not be accurate. It's because the total voltage of the battery is much higher. You can see 3.4 or 3.34 times 4 compared to 3.29 times 4. It's the big voltage difference between these two batteries. So what we're looking at is the CAN bus software that Valence provides, and it's the one that communicates through the expensive USB adapter. It'll tell you the lowest and the highest cell voltage of all uh, of the whole the whole pack. Shows you all of your batteries, all the cells on one screen, and that's pretty handy. And the contactor is closed, so it's happy. It's not throwing any other errors over here. Um, the pack voltage is often incorrect. Like right now, it's 26, not 24. I, I've never figured out why that's always showing a weird number. Sometimes it's accurate though. So it shows that there's two batteries in communication. One of them is balancing. We don't have any errors. And balance, inter interbalancing is happening at the moment. One thing you can do to find out if your battery's internal amp meters is, is accurate or not is to disconnect the wire from the battery so that there could be no current moving between batteries or anywhere else. And then, look here and if you see the current as something under like half of an amp then it'll, it'll be pretty accurate the state of charge will track pretty nicely this is holding steady at a third of an amp so that's real but if it's like half of an amp and then zero and it's bouncing around then uh, then yeah it's basically no no amperage moving the reason this is taking a little bit of current is because it's powering the relay in the computer right now all right so let's say you want to disconnect your 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 batteries by opening the relay. You just turn the power button off, you hear the click, it shuts off. Now there's still a little bit of voltage present, but the capacitors in your um, inverter are going to be self-discharging pretty rapidly, assuming your other sources of power are off. Now before we turn the relay on and shoot a big ass spark across the terminals, welding them or something, we're going to pre-charge it. And so, to do that, we first make sure the power switch is on. So make sure that's suppressed. And then we hold this down until we hear the click and the blue light comes on. There, all right. That's pretty much it. If you have any questions or any problems, especially problems, something happens, call me. 
immediately. You can message me, but if I don't respond instantly, then call me to get my attention. One more thing. If you unplug the communication cable from the BMS to the battery, and you plug in an RS-485 adapter, that's like one of these guys. That plugs right into the battery and right into your USB port. The RS-485 adapter is actually built, molded into the head here. So no little standard screws to hold the wires to it or, you know, they get loose and fall out all the time. That's why I like this instead. So this will enable you to see the batteries one at a time. But in order to do it, you have to unplug the cable. You can't connect this and the BMS at the same time. Now there is an unused connector here at the end, right? This one. And I've, I've bridged these two together before, like, like this while the BMS was on and it, it went haywire. You, I got no relevant data. It did come up with some numbers that looked like, oh, are these real? No, they were totally out of reality. So the only way to spy on this while it's in operation is to use the CAN bus adapter, which looks like that. And sometimes it's important to be able to spy on it while it's in operation because you need to be able to see while still being protected if there's an overvoltage condition because something's not balanced right. I've had batteries in the past that uh, had a faster self-discharge rate, so, so the other battery needed to bleed off all the time, and the bleed-off resistor couldn't keep up, so I had to add an external balancer on that setup, and then it worked fine.